hey, why don't we have elbow caps? I mean, we have kneecaps and elbows and knees are pretty similar. They both have lots of strong muscles controlling their flexion and extension. Both are located in the middle of a limb and they're both classified as hinge joints. So why does only one of them have a floating bone embedded in its major tendon? This is a question that we're gonna need some kinesiology to answer. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Patrick. And as someone with a kinesiology background, videos like these are what I nerd out for the most. The kneecap or patella is one of those biomechanical situations that really lets us see the skeleton as a series of levers and machines. The patella is what's called a sesamoid bone, a small round bone that's embedded within a tendon. We have a bunch of these around the body, from the tiny ones in the tendons of our fingers to the little pair of bones in the flexor hallucis brevis tendon, a muscle that bends the big toe. Those bones can absorb and redirect forces and can actually enhance force production. And a tiny muscle like the flexor hallucis brevis will take all the mechanical advantage it can get. Stabilizing the big toe is a big part of balancing on two legs. The same idea with the patella and the knee. It's providing a mechanical advantage. To see why, I have to introduce some mechanics. You're probably familiar with the idea of torque. If you're trying to loosen a tight nut, it'll be easier to do if you use a longer lever. That's all torque is. It's force times the distance between the axis and wherever you're applying force. And we can think of our joints in terms of torque also. There will be an axis at some location in the joint and a muscle that applies force to it. The distance from the axis, what we also call a moment arm, depends on where the muscle inserts on the bone. Like while the brachialis and brachioradialis both both bend the elbow, the brachioradialis inserts farther away from the axis than the brachialis, so it has a longer moment arm. We can take that a step further and find the moment arm in force for all kinds of things. This is my friend Jordan. Let's say she's at the gym and doing some bicep curls. We can measure the distance or moment arm of the biceps insertion and the moment arm of the weight she's holding. The weight has a longer moment arm than the bicep tendon. So in order to lift 20 pounds of weight, her biceps actually have to generate way more than 20 pounds of force. If you wanted to surgically move your biceps insertion point a little farther down their radius, yes, you'd have a longer moment arm, but I wouldn't recommend it. It's much easier to get steroids. That brings us back to the kneecap though. If we look at the tibiofemoral joint, it's a hinge joint. So its only axis of rotation is right in between the femoral condyles. We have to specify this since the patellofemoral joint is a separate gliding joint. There are two important things happening there. The first is that the patella is providing a mechanical advantage. The moment arm here is not the distance from axis to insertion. It's the distance from axis to pivot point. Without a kneecap, the moment arm would be the distance from axis to the edge of the femur. But by adding a sesamoid bone, you've increased the moment arm available and increased the amount of torque you can apply at the knee joint. This is a big deal. Lots of tetrapods have patella in their hind limbs for this exact reason, except ostriches. They have two patella per knee. When engineers talk about the mechanical advantage that a tool or a piece of machinery gives them, it's the same thing as our patella. The second thing the patella does is change the direction of force from the quads. It's kind of like the wheel in a pulley. There's a little groove on the femur called the trochlea that the patella glides in. Since this groove isn't super even or symmetrical, the patella can be closer or farther away from the joint axis at any given time in flexion and extension. That changes how much it contributes to torque at any given level of flexion. A series of experiments back in the 70s showed that when the knee was flexed at 120 degrees, the patella accounted for 40 millimeters of the quadriceps moment arm. But when the knee was straight, the patella accounted for 180 millimeters of the moment arm. That means the patella makes a bigger difference during the last part of knee extension, but it still contributes torque throughout the entire motion. Follow-up experiments in people with surgically removed patellas show that the quadriceps had to generate 15 to 30% more force in order to straighten the knee. This does not apply to force produced by the hamstrings for knee flexion. While maybe 10 to 30% of people do have a sesamoid bone behind their knee, nicknamed the fabella, knee flexion uses a special bit of kinesiology called the screw home mechanism to start flexion. It's a whole separate video by itself though. Great, so if the patella gives the quad quadriceps such a mechanical advantage, why don't we have elbow caps? Let's take a look at elbow extension from our lever and torque perspective. We have a humerus, ulna, and our axis in between the epicondyles of the humerus. There's one main muscle that extends the elbow, the triceps brachii, which inserts on the sharp bump of your ulna called the olecranon process. As the name implies, 
The triceps has three heads, originating here, here, and here. This medial head inserts on the olecranon through a separate, deeper tendon, which will become relevant in a second. The moment arm for the triceps is a few centimeters, and it doesn't start ducking under the axis until past 90 degrees of flexion. And here's the beauty of the triceps. We don't have to use all three heads of the triceps at max strength every time we extend our elbow. The medial head of the triceps doesn't become fully involved in extension unless the elbow is bent past 90 degrees. When we do need extra force, we can fire that medial head and generate more torque. So why don't we have elbow caps? It's because the knee needs extra help and the tricep is so overpowered it intentionally holds back in most cases. Now, there are cases of people who have free-floating accessory bones in their elbows, but this is super rare and is usually a sign that something bad happened. Like cases of patella cubity. It has the name patella in it, but it's only a fracture of the olecranon that looks like a free-floating patella. This is an injury. It's bad. So there you go. Something that started as kind of party trivia in my mind actually was a good exploration of the kinesiology concept. If you want more of these musculoskeletal videos, by the way, I've got an entire playlist of them. You can find them right here. Go check out this video about bone physiology, give me money, and then subscribe. <laughs> subscribe right here, hit the bell icon so you get notified when I post a new video. Have fun, be good. Thanks for watching.